Miami Township Trustees June 21st, 2023 meeting. Happy Solstice, everyone. And belated Juneteenth. Yes. Um, I'd like to make call this meeting to order with the adoption of the minutes of June 5th. Everybody get a copy? I did. I will move for adoption. I will second. I'm hearing a move and a second. Any discussion? Uh, yes, there are two places where we use acronyms that we haven't in the same document spelled out earlier. Mm -hmm. Try not to do that. Um, I mean, one is BOE is Board of, or it's not Board of Elections, it's uh, no, DOE, Department of Energy. Um, and then less obvious is uh, later on there's reference to OF. What's, what's the organization that's doing the uh, organization review of the fire? Ohio Police Fire Association, OP. Oh, Ohio Fire Chief Association. Well, it's got, it's got a longer. That was in this one. See what I'm talking about. Anyway, clarifying the acronyms. This is my only. Oh, I have CA assessment? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh, I've heard you. Yes, I try not to do that. I will correct those. Well, I'm probably copying your earlier pattern. I should know that. So. If I hear no further discussion, may we vote on accepting the minutes as amended? The move and second is to adopt the minutes of June 5th, 2023, with the noted amendments. Um, Mr. Winter? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Fire? Yes. Minutes are adopted. Okay. Um, I'd like to entertain a motion to pay our bills. Total expenses, um, $50,000, $50,497.64. General fund, $4,490.68. Fire fund, $37,166.91. EMS billing, $1,730.72. Cemetery, $1,455.37. Roads and bridges, $5,653.96. And I assume those are just the separate accounts that are coming out of me. Can I do I have a motion to pay our bills? I so move. Second. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, may we vote? It's been moved and seconded to approve payment of bills in the amount of fifty thousand four ninety seven sixty four as enumerated. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Munter? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Motion approved. Um, we had correspondence. It's always uh, this week, um, Pontum, our change to terms of Pontum subscription, I assume that was nothing much. Um, mm -hmm. Request for final comments on the, from Green County Regional Planning on the final draft of Perspectives 2040, which is the new um, long range plan. It's on um, there in chapters if you haven't seen it. It's on our, it's on our email in, in okay. chapters I want for, to review. Okay, I went to several um, input sessions. Um, I guess I could read it again. Now, Friends of Bear Mill, I remember they want our membership update. Do we know Bear Mill? Uh, they, they want our membership update for the Spoon Society of Society of Prevention of Old Mills, which we have been a member for many years. Which I I don't feel we need to be a member anymore, just because. The mills in the Glen Helens purview now. Right. Uh, Bear Mill is where they they're planning on visiting for their yearly tour somewhere up in Minnesota, I believe. So we're not actually becoming members of the Friends of Bear Mill. The request was to be our yearly membership renewal, like twenty five dollars for the Society of Prevention. Okay. Okay. Preservation of All right, OTA legislative alert. Um, 
Kevin Heath, inquiry re requesting zoning guidance for a tiny house. I, I think he's, we got Richard to respond to him. I thought I saw an email about that. Um, Chris Mutcher, Jason Fundingberg, back and forth about the, co is that the concrete apron issue, what I could gather. Mm -hmm. Marilyn Moyer, Richard's off. Interesting discussion on bed and breakfast versus Airbnb in the township. Um, Marilyn Moyer, Kathleen Garrison, discussion of large scale solar. Mark Harding of Servlet, website domain renewed. Opers retired. It's actually Mike, but that's all right. Just all right. Got call I again. should remember that. <laughs> Opers. That Mike versus Mark. Yeah, Mike versus Mark. Mike, Mike Harding. Um, Opers retirement workshop for those retiring. Um, the Greater Dayton Partnership for, environment, for the Environment Fall Award Celebration sponsorship. You Somebody put a $250 question mark? I did. I would uh, I would uh, advocate our contributing $250 to their to their project, their program. Oh, shall we make that new business? We certainly could. Let's do it. We just came in under correspondence. Green Energy Ohio, is, there's a Zoom meeting, um, information meeting on agrivoltaics. I Do you remember the date? I tomorrow think it's tomorrow, tomorrow. yeah. Um, that's, uh, there's a Zoom link in the, in the email. So. Mm -hmm. um, there was other correspondence. It's always tough to know what to include and what not. But um, any, do you have, Is there any that you didn't see here that you want to bring up? Um, that's usually opposite of the way that I'm generally doing. I generally list them all and then don't worry about the ones that weren't, as opposed to having ones that I wanted to. Yeah, well, having ones that I wanted to. The thing is, there's really things like, hey, you've got to pay this subscription and, um, and other things, and yeah. others that are, are not for public consumption as well. Anyway, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Well, there all shouldn't right. be, but that's <coughs> good there. I mean, it should be all public, but not. You know, not just trivia. Yeah, trivia. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyone, anybody, member of the public, have anything for the agenda? Before we move on, I just would like to somewhere along the line uh, ask Danny to review his conversations with Mark Harding regarding the domain name issue. Mike Harding. Yeah. <laughs> renewal. <laughs> renewal fiasco of. Okay, Kevin. As I was driving down Interstate 95 <laughs> in Georgia, <laughs> in the middle of traffic. You want to do that now? You're running the. You're okay, running the you want to give us a lowdown? I mean, I thought with that, I thought you solved that. I didn't solve it. Okay. Well, uh, well, no, you, 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 you caused it to be solved. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, fortunately, that that worked. Yeah, so the. The, the township's domain did did expire. Uh, it, like you, you had told me it was set for 10 years. So I assume that he's going to set it for 10 years uh, uh, expiration again. The, um, the message I got from him was it was for one year. Okay. Oh. Okay. So, um, so we should probably look at changing changing that in the future to like, usually you get a price break at like three years. Not, not a huge amount, but at least then it's not a constant annual thing. Yeah. So we do ours. We do ours every three years. So in fact, actually, if we got it, ours and yours on the same cycle, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Three years, ten years, permanently. And, Fine with me. And yeah. the reason why we did, we received no notice of it is just that the, the company changed hands and it got yeah. lost in the shuffle, yep. basically. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there's a bit of a scare, but yeah, crisis okay. averted. Hmm? Crisis averted. Right. Um, any public additions? Anybody in the public want to add anything? Um, I made a note here um, that we've had a number of issues and queries regarding zoning procedures and commissions that have been received in recent weeks, and we are taking this opportunity to fully investigate claims and consider policy changes. We are not prepared to speak about these until our inquiry is complete. I assure you everything will be public when we've come. Well, we've discussed it privately or with others. Any questions?
Okay, then. Fire Department. Um, okay, so we ended up actually just having 58, that's a correction because we just had a call before the meeting, 58 EMS calls, um, 11 or so of those were street fair related, um, and then there were 12 fire incidences, um, so that's the reason for the, the inflated EMS calls. Uh, Colin will be out of town until July the 3rd, so obviously I'm covering house in, in the meantime for that. Um, we did replace uh, two steering tires on engine 82. Um, one was quite bad uh, and had been replaced individually, but the other one was far enough along, both needed to go. Uh, TJ Fry's uh, completed his paramedic program and he is now uh, nationally registered and state certified and is going through basically a reorientation as an ALS provider right now before he's released to, to be in the back on his own as, as a paramedic. Congratulations to him. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a lot of work. A lot of work. A lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, we had uh, four people who went um, to pitch and fire to do some grain bin rescue training. That brings us up um, to 10 people within the agency that have that training. Um, we estimate there's around 70 grain bins in the township. Um, those are pretty unique hazards. Um, and quite deadly, so uh, obviously training for those is pretty important. There's there's a number of grain bins obviously in the county, but the township we have definitely the, the bulk of them. Uh, street fair went pretty well. Uh, we had a total of around 17 people that were on shift. Um, you know, we've had to go through some changes in terms of how we actually uh, manage street fair from, from our perspective, just basically because of location change in the fire station. You know, we used to be right in the thick of things and we're not now. Um, but uh, that's, that's actually, the changes have worked out uh, pretty decently um, that way. So we did transport of the 11, uh, we transported three patients total to the hospital, uh, typical like minor heat emergencies, uh, which is not too bad considering had pretty ideal weather, honestly. Not not humid, and not too warm. Every food truck vendor was inspected. Um, that's something that the Ohio Fire Code requires us to do at, at any of these. There's a whole various checklist that we go through to do that, uh, and that was primarily covered. Nate does the, the bulk of, of that. A uh, few tents in that. Um, we do have, we did provide and, and staff a first aid booth that typically in the past, that's basically always done by Kettering. Um, they have had an, a, a legal opinion that they no longer can provide those services, um, which doesn't make any sense to any of us in any way, shape, or form. So we're uh, basically coming up with another plan that we're just going to have to take that responsibility on. Um, although there's some discussion with two of the nurses that, that always really volunteered for that or are Yell Springs, we're not Yell Springs residents now, but graduated, you know, born and graduated from, from here. So they're still interested in doing it. So we're going to see if we can do that under the auspices of the of service of the fire department, but uh, do that through our medical director. So we'll see how that goes. And obviously that would be something we'd start doing in the, in the fall one. Um, we had uh, Jeremy flew his drone over the crowd uh, at various stages and, and uh, did a, a grid, aerial grid photographs, which allowed us actually to get a much more accurate crowd count. Um, that's where we came up with the 23,000 in attendance. The only thing that doesn't really let us do is people who are hanging out under trees. We obviously count, count if we know they're under trees, but 23,000, that's pretty darn close to what we typically have rough guess. So, you know, having a more accurate way of counting is nice. We'll do that again in the fall. Um, they can only fit so much sand in the bottle, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's it. And that, that was, you know, I remember a few times when it's been more than that, but that's still plenty. It's nice to have street fair back, I guess. Um, FMLA stuff, we do have, um, we have a, a supervisor who's off on feminine medical leave act. I won't bring that person's name up in, in public. Um, for obvious reasons, um, that person is expected to be out for the next four weeks or so. So unfortunately, that's going to stick us with overtime. Uh, 
um, that individual is an advanced life support provider also, so most of that's unfortunately going to be bringing in a, a paramedic, but we'll do what we can, obviously, to, to limit as much as, much as possible. Uh, that's all I've got. Uh, you said 17 staff at Street Fair? Yes. Is that everybody? How many are volunteers? Uh, <laughs> how many are volunteers? Okay. That would have been... Two. So how much does street fair cost us? That is a really difficult question to answer. Um, what, what did we build the, the chamber of commerce? Uh, we, I can't remember exactly what the check was. We ended up getting, recovering, I want to say around $1,500. Uh, there's some discussion about making some changes. We, we get a per vendor fee on top of that, but if we're going to take over providing the first aid, uh, and if we actually have to staff that ourselves, then that is something that will be built by the cham to the chamber, and they're aware that that is an additional response. Basically, what, we, what we're doing is we are setting that the minimum amount of personnel that we would provide specifically to the street fair is five additional people above and beyond what would be our normal staffing. So they pay for that. Um, there's, it, it, it's just not realistic or practical for us to be able to come up with a very accurate dollar figure to be able to say this is ultimately what it would end up costing. We know that even, even if we completely did that, in a way that made any sense, it wouldn't be practical for us to be able to, to go back and bill for that. So we're trying to look and say at least what are the bare minimum costs that, that well, we can. I just, I think that we should, we should know, you know, figure out what, what is it. The, so, so not that we necessarily get all the money for it. So some of, some of where that comes in as being a, an interesting thing is we're trying to look now and, and kind of actually revamp all of this so we're in a better position to not only be able to ask that answer that question but do a little bit more in terms of looking at if we know that there's an event going on and it has a certain number of people that this is how much we would actually up staff for not necessarily try and recoup those costs yeah. but this is sort of how it how it so pride, be. for instance, mm -hmm. perfect is are very much involved, right? Yeah, and and you know, and some some of the things that occur in town are not as well planned out. Not to necessarily specifically say that about pride, but you know, there are all kinds of things that happen during the weekends that you know really aren't. And the village has been trying a great deal more to make sure that permits are issued and. And some of that, but we're we're looking a lot more aggressively at at some of those. So that may be something, maybe in a year or so, as we're looking at that and trying to implement it, we may we should be in a better position to honestly answer what you just asked. But you know, I had a relatively long conversation with Colin not that long ago about this very subject, and my takeaway from it was you all were basically committed to, especially with the, with the new fee structure that the village was talking about with, with vendors or with whoever was doing stuff, was he, he sounded like you were pretty well committed to recovering actual cost expended mm -hmm. during the event, whether that was Band-Aids or whether it was people, I'm not sure exactly how he broke that down, but yeah. if you look at, I mean, if, if on any given Saturday you have a staff of three mm -hmm. and you had 17, yep. so then you paid for 14, mm -hmm. so it seems as though it would not be out of the realm of possibility to check the payroll for that day of the additional Yeah, 14. and I have not looked at those reports for that specific day. Um, I do know that he has talked about that as well in the past, and some of it's been a topic because this has been a heavily discussed topic in the village. Um, but we need to get past the discussion, and, and I thought we were past the thinking about it stage 
and we, well, before COVID, we, we used to bill like fifteen hundred dollars or whatever it was. We right. used to get a long time ago. We used to get hardly anything. Right. I mean, really, hardly anything for doing all the inspections and being there. And then after after that got settled, then we were getting a flat like fifteen hundred dollars mm -hmm. or less, just whatever it was for street fair. And then COVID, and then we weren't getting anything. And then the first, then the last October one where they restarted with the new administration and, and they didn't send us a bill or we didn't send them a bill or it didn't happen. So that's when I thought this whole thing was coming and we were committed to, and I got the impression he was committed to billing them for actual expenses. Yeah, and, and I, like I, I, I would say, at, so with, with certainly the change in, uh, you know, new people running street fair uh, and that um, there's a, there are some things that I, I would say just, I don't want to, I hesitate to say I've fallen, you know, kind of through the cracks, but just start because of, of new people, changes in communication, sometimes lack of communication, that there's plenty of opportunity to be able to recruit, re, recover more expenditures. Yeah. And I do know that that is specifically something that Colin discussed with, I forget who off the top of my head, from the chamber, uh -huh. and that will actually be, there are some things that will bring in some additional resources at the next street fair. Uh, As I'm not talking about the next one, I'm talking about this one. You know, I think we should bill for this one. Yeah. We had the October street fair, and we knew what the new people, they were coming in, and we yeah. figured out what was being done and what wasn't being done. There was a period of time between then and now mm -hmm. to get into place, and you have the I mean, you have the dollar figure based on... Yeah, the only thing you do is look at the payroll report. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, if for you want to throw in another $500 for depreciation on the equipment or something, I, that's fine with me. But it seems as though we got the figure of what we spent. So I... I, I know in the old days when you had volunteers, you couldn't really do it because no. we weren't really paying them. Right. But if, if we got people on payroll who, mm -hmm. are, who are out down there... That's no different than the village people who are on payroll that are down there. And I, I don't know, I don't know how the village does it, um, but I, I, I have, would certainly not have an issue with going back and looking at payroll for that Saturday and seeing if, if everything was covered. Does the uh, village give any kind of support with police and um, staff people? I mean, are we expecting I, he I hesitate to changes? answer that because I, I know that there, are, there have been some changes that have happened okay. and some changes in some discussion if there were going, that there were probably going to be some in-kind things, but I haven't been part of those discussions. So I'm, I'm not, that's why I hesitate to, to say for sure. That would uh, be a host weight, host weight question. And, and that's, that's their problem. <laughs> we have our own. Uh, you know, I don't think the two are linked. I mean, we, we we put paid people on the street. Well, we're. I, I mean, I I don't feel like we got everything covered. I'll put it that way. I just don't know what the percentage is, but I'll look at it. What do you mean? I'm sorry. Explain yourself. You, you I I don't know covered. what the percentage would be versus how much income we or how much money we got from the chamber as opposed to what our true expenses were. In this particular time? Mm -hmm. This specific time. Yeah. Oh. Have we already received something from mm -hmm. oh. okay. Well, it? Okay. I thought you said 1500 plus plus a fee from each um, vendor. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Okay. But I mean, in that in terms of, so I, I that specific number, I'm tossing that out because that's roughly what I remember because I didn't see the checks at the time. But actually, we got the checks on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, and and then what our overall expenses were, particularly for payroll, because I honestly I hadn't looked at sure. it. Sure. But okay. I'll look at it and, okay. and, and see what percentage it is. All right, well, I was misunderstood. I, I thought you were talking about, well, in the future, oh, yeah. we'll want to uh, consider. Yeah, no, I, I, there's the, the based, based on from what Colin updated me on his conversation with, with uh, the chamber, they are very willing to make sure that we are that they are covering additional expenses so okay. like, we're we're headed in a right place okay all right well that's good all yeah. right well that's that's good to know um engine 82 the bad pump is it better yet no 
um, it's it's functional. It, it's it's usable. It's not out of service or anything like that. But um, we're still waiting for them to come down and do the repair work on that. Yeah. Same same thing with two medic. Actually, two medic things. I've got uh, Pen Care, who's the dealer for Braun, coming down to fix a door on an ambulance and uh, maybe an electrical issue. Cemetery report, Dan. Okay. <clears throat> Since the last meeting, we've had two burials, both at Glen Forest. These were full burials. We have one this Friday in Clifton, a full burial. And then the first, we'll have a burial in Glen Forest on Saturday the first. Full burial. We're going to weed eat Clifton next week to get ready for the holiday. Or he is. I'm going to do other things. And then Roger's going to weed eat too for that one. Make it look nice. Mm -hmm. That's good. You know, we got a little grass growing in the, in the straw, and it was pretty quick. Yeah. Usually it's not that fast. Yeah. Like the rain. Yeah. It helped. <laughs> yeah. Between the heat and the rain, that, that'll make them grow. But this is about all I have for that. Um, the the wackety whack you did with the 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 honey stuff, is that something that happens every year or just every once in a while? I haven't trimmed it. That's the first time for a long time. First time, long time, yeah. What did you trim? Oh, um, I trimmed the cemetery. <laughs> the um, with that giant thing that the arm mutil I'm sorry, mutilates the trees. It'll recover, I'm sure. It look normal. It looked like a tornado went through, but um, I'm sure it had to be done. And where was that? Good force. Back. Um, all the way back. The, the south side. South side where the, the road's going to be. Um, the, the one that a bud's glass farm. The line of trees on the right. Where you were actually just describing the exit road. It wasn't it wasn't the it wasn't the line of birch trees? No. No no no. No, I took the south side where, it's, where it's the been, building you wanted that trim there. back. I actually wanted the birch trees, not the not the south side of where the building is. But I mean well, if, it it needed trim back. if it needed trimming, that's fine, but it was the birch trees that I was I, I, would I didn't a, run down on yeah. the birch. I, I mean, we had barrel that day, so I done half, and then mm -hmm. after the barrel, I finished. So I'll, I'll go to um, the um, um, I, I, I would really hate to see that happen to those birch trees. Well, I know, but they, they I mean, that on machine the, is, is on the lawnmower. I mean, I, I actually had a, a complaint there. from someone saying, like, what did you guys do out of their honeysuckle? But they do look like they were it cuts them it, it, it cuts them and wrangles them you've seen it on along, along the roads those birch trees would be well in six hideous. weeks they they heal themselves over and you can't really tell that they why, why do we have to do that to the birch trees because the people who mow the grass there they they have a hard time when those trees not to mention cars and trucks that are trying to get out of there they get they get you know that have to be pushed through the limbs but it goes really high. I mean, well, I was talking about the high part, just the low part where where you would be driving. Oh, well, I'll look really at them. Maybe it's something we could just take the holes all and, and just cut them back. Because yeah. I, I would, I, I don't really want to peel them clear back. I just want to take off the long stuff, right? Just yeah. So we could just just where the road where, is, yeah. the, the the drive is, up maybe ten feet, so Roger mm -hmm. doesn't have to you know duck his head when he goes mm -hmm. through and. You guys and us guys don't have to get our cars and trucks sure. hit with branches as they go through. Just the normal reason yeah. that we trim. I would really appreciate that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll clean it up. We'll make it look right. Okay. Yeah, so you're, you're talking about the birch trees that separates the, the, the prairie from the oak tree. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those are beautiful. Yeah. There are some branches that need to be. Oh yeah, I'm yeah, sure. We can sure. pull sure. some sure. off sure. real quick. We'll, <laughs> okay. it. we'll take care of it. We trimmed the other side last year. I hate to say this, if you don't want to get yelled at. We trimmed the other side last year because because it it, it was over the actual I mean potential grave sites. The the, the tree limbs were right up against. Yeah, the I remember. Grave so we but but did you do that with the the no, no, that we, thing? No, we didn't do that. We took actually we cut them too. We took a couple out that were with a pole saw or something. We took them out. So do we own that that thing that mutilates trees? Yes. We do? Okay. 
I don't mean to. I mean, I know stuff has to be done, but wow. It's bought and paid for. It's a lot faster to do it by hand. Yeah. Oh, it's faster to do it by hand? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's a lot faster than doing it by hand. Yeah. Um, I will, honey, I'll, one thing. River Birch is. I'll take care of it. I'll make it look nice. Okay. Thanks for sure. uh, appeasing our listening. And sh anything else for the cemetery? Mm -hmm. um, Dan, you have the roads report? Yep, yes I do. So I started trimming today the roads. And tomorrow I'm going to finish snip in a couple hours. And then we're going to dig a grave for a Friday burial in Clifton. Which Brandon's going to take care of because I won't be here. And uh, Clifton's asked if we would wedge another area for them before the end of the season. I told him we would. Another truckload of paper. Bill, anything? <coughs> so let's clarify the village of Clifton, village of Clifton that we have a standing contract with. That's right. We done some, and then Alex called and said, "Hey, would you, are you done? Mm -hmm. you want to do some more?" I said, "Sure, but it'd be later on. It won't be right this minute. So we'll get it." I called Jared Pickens today about the truck on the website. I didn't get him. I'll try and get tomorrow. We have running boards on the truck. And yeah, I noticed. I think they work pretty good. Yeah, you don't fall through a net or anything. They're kind of nice. They're, they'll grip and stuff will fall through. Mm -hmm. and I think that was about it. Yeah. Don or Chris, anything else for roads? I had a couple things. This is a combination of two road tours that I took that we didn't have time to go over the last meeting because we had so many other things going on. And then one that I took just a couple of days ago, but that's a little bit later. And so I'm going to combine a couple. But you say you're, you're starting to work on Snipe Road. Well, most of it today. I've got a couple hours left. I'm trimming all the roads. I'm doing all of them. Because both that and Houston needed yeah, a little that'll be more. Next. And there's some right not till next week. That's what I'll be doing. A little bit of mowing too. Oh and yeah. You're, and both when you say they need work, it's not the mowing. It's the, mainly the trimming. The brush, the honey stuff. Some, needs, yeah. I'll there's some areas things. that are going to need mowed, mm -hmm. but there are more areas that need trim, especially East Hyde and East East Hyde. Both need to be trimmed fairly badly. So that's on your list? Oh, that's well good. Okay. And Grinnell Circle? Yeah. You're going to run through there? Yeah. And Lightly. Uh, Larkins, you plan on trimming that? I'll get there. What well, is Grinnell Circle reaction? I thought you said you could work at Larkins last week trimming that. That's what confused me. No. It's not, because I don't know. Uh, Kyle, have, have you driven? Yeah, we're missing a sign. Huh? We're missing a sign. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know if you got yeah, that. Yeah, already have. I looked around, I didn't see it on the ground, I guess. Uh, they posted there, they must have took it with them. They yeah. ran over there. Yeah. Oh, they must have took it with them, but yeah, we was... should be getting a new one soon. So, who ran over, what ran over? I had no idea who ran over it. It was leaning with no sign. The street there. sign. Mm -hmm. So we, the we road just sign noticed was... that it happened. No one reported it. It's been like probably a week or better since I know I've talked to the county. They're going to do We can do something. It was gone a month ago. No, it wasn't that long. Yep. Anything else for the roads? Fiscal officer report. I, I think there is none, unless you guys have something. There is no amendment. I mean, um, there is no resolution this week. Um, anything for fiscal officer too? The fiscal officer, or nope. uh, regarding the fiscal officer? Um, we don't have any um, financial data today. That's an issue for me. But. I have a couple of things, at least to consider or to think about, or something because. Don had mentioned about who can else or the Clifton Cemetery endowment fund to work. Mm -hmm. We have 
We have a fund. It's it's 2041 in our on our books. It's been there for 50 years. I don't know how long, but it's got four thousand two hundred forty-five dollars and ninety-one cents in it. It's marked it's marked Clifton Cemetery, and my little brain. I was going to say that, but I didn't want to. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you're saying it. <laughs> we were going to say, say my little brain. Small brain? <laughs> wow. I, I thought that's the word that was going to come next. That was, that was a little rough. But, no, no, no. <laughs> um, I don't there's, I just see no reason, and I've never heard a decent reason, why we are continuing to hold on to this fund. And we never spend out of it. We never put anything in it. We never spend out of it. It says Clifton, and we're not supposed to keep, I mean, we don't have, we don't have responsibility for Clifton's finances. Only the Clifton Cemetery Board has responsibility for their own finances. So why are we holding money that's marked Clifton Cemetery? Why doesn't Clifton Cemetery have that money? I don't know. So I'm embarrassed that I hadn't caught this. Uh, don't be, because I've been sitting on in this for 25 front. years. You yeah. don't remember anything about it? It's just about the origin? Yes and no. <laughs> you want the long, long no, term? No, we're, we're, we're not going to have a long meeting today. It's the longest day of the year, but we're going to. Uh, <laughs> you, you actually have a copy of this, that I, what I'm speaking of, in, in your, to, to look at. A, a long time ago in the early 90s, a person died in Clifton and bequeathed 41,000 something change to the Clifton Fire Department. And with that money, they bought a new medic, and they kept it at the fire department in Clifton for many years for their, their use, and that was very nice of them. And when I first started, that money, I'm almost positive, had been put in this capital fund, Mark Clifton something, for the fire truck. They bought the truck, and there was this little bit of money left, and it was just sitting in there, and it's never, nothing was ever done with it. Somehow, over the years, that got changed to Clifton Cemetery. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. In my, in my memory, that's, it got, it moved from Clifton Ambulance Fund to Clifton Cemetery Fund. Well, we certainly don't need a, any more Clifton Ambulance Fund. In our standing committee reports, I'm going to be talking more about the Clifton Cemetery. Maybe I could. Well, maybe you could add this into your. Okay. How do I get my endowment fund a little bit fatter mm -hmm. than it is? Which what endowment fund? Uh, okay. I'll be yeah, reporting yeah, on yeah. that. The one he's going to report on. Okay. Um, the other. The other thing, the other, well, I guess there's actually two things, but I am going to, again, try and follow up with David Graham and, and figure out, isn't there some way to spend this $269,000 that's just doing nothing? There must be some reason, some way we can spend it. I, mean, I don't know what it is, but I'm going to... The one that's in the um, building fund? Yeah, 4901 or whatever it is. It just bugs me to see that sitting there doing nothing. But I'll bend his ear. I think I'm going to see him this weekend, so. Um, I, I thought that that was, I mean, it came from, came from the sale of the old firehouse. Okay. I, I went into I, the wrong fund. But that was $119,000. Yeah, but there was. But there's already two set 69 in there. I didn't realize that was off limits, too. Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out, whether it's all or just the, the part that went in there by mistake. Oh, yeah, we need to talk about that. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. That's upsetting. Um, but it wouldn't be all for naught. It would take off the payment of the building at the end of the yeah. building. Oh, sure. and yeah. It would go someplace. We wouldn't just lose it. No, we're not going to lose it, but it just seems so bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah the, the last thing is we need to at least think about, as we move along, and Denny's discussion at our last meeting about committing to purchasing an ambulance for $339,000.85 or whatever. That as much as we would like to spend this last installment or the last off the COVID money, what are we calling that? ARPA, ARPA fund on good things, and everything's good, but uh, 
have a feeling we're going to need to commit that to this ambulance. So let's keep that in mind. Okay. We won't need to do that until we know where we're going to be after the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association assessment of our building and our operations and everything. But let's just not forget that that money's there and that we've got a commitment for this ambulance and Danny feels that we need to start putting money aside for a new fire engine for a million dollars. Eight hundred thousand dollars. Might be a million dollars. Yeah. Um, time we pay for it. Yeah, I've actually been talking about that too. So I'll um, I, it's top of my mind. So we do need to um, come to a decision about that. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to talk to you more about that forty nine million one because I, I thought I thought that the two sixty nine was available, but it's just the hundred nineteen that. I don't think so. I, I'm not positive, but I don't think so. So in effect, we we just pay off the building early, but we don't get to spend that money. Right. It's good for the people. That's what we're working for, the people. Um, they won't know. They won't even know they paid it off early, but they some someone will know. We'll tell them. Okay. What about mortgage burning thing? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, zoning inspector's not here. Anything zoning related? I, I, I think the things are pretty abuzz. People asking for um, events and things. I think we've got two two potential BZA hearings coming down the pike. But I don't have dates been set for those? There's one on July 6th. Um, and that's for which? 115. Um, Fairfield. 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 Standing committee reports. I don't have anything of note for MBRPC besides a lot of traffic, a lot of, um, what am I trying to say, Cons traffic construction projects and um, L what do they call it, A aging and wellness um, grants and things like that that mm -hmm. they're working on, otherwise there's not much. Yes, they are busy, aren't they? MVRPC Transportation Advisory Committee. I, mean, I, I don't know. These committees seem to change every um, time. I, we don't have anybody on that committee, do we? Sort of me. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> but I they haven't that. been sending notices. And I... That well, I, I did notice that they, that they canceled this month's TAC meeting. They canceled every okay. other one. Okay. If it's... I, I have no report. Okay. Green County Regional Planning. Regional Planning. Um, we spent the majority of the meeting last time reviewing sections of the 2040 Long Range uh, Comprehensive Plan that they're working on that is actually finished, kind of finished right now, and it will be out into the public for comment and review, uh, both public and and participating political subdivisions who are uh, you know who are in the Regional Planning Commission, um, it, that will all be going out um, as of next next Tuesday's meeting, total board meeting. It will be presented to the total board, which then makes it presented to the total board's um, you know, sub political subdivision parliament. So, and uh, they've done a, I think they've done a marvelous job um, for as comprehensive as this comprehensive land use plan is. That the, I think they've covered virtually all their bases, and uh, it's well written and well thought out. Um, it's about 100 pages long. It's not just you know, just over one uh, one beer it's worth, but uh, it's a nice it's a nice project. It's you know, so that was that uh, effort from that. Okay. And Clifton Union Cemetery. Well, we met yesterday. The main topic being uh, consolidating and storing our records. Uh, somebody in Clifton produced some records that we weren't aware of. 
and at the first glance, it looks like it may be redundant um, records of burials, but we'll see. Uh, and the big news is that the property that was deeded to us, a, a house, um, it had been given to us in 2005, but that the we wouldn't have income from it until the person living in the house died, who has now died, and then the family will be removing uh, stuff over the next month. And we haven't taken formal action, but in conversation, the plan is to sell the house. It's valued at, uh, not the market value, the Clark County auditor's appraisal is over 100000 uh, and that is to be used for a strict endowment and would only the income from that we could use on the operation of the cemetery. Uh, and so we may add that $4,000 from the Miami Township. Uh, Yellow Springs Development Corporation. Yellow Springs Development Corporation. I missed the last meeting, but I hear you were here. I was. I was doing something else in the office, and there was just this very interesting group of people in here, and I said, what's going on, guys? And they asked me to join them, and so it was, what? It was very interesting. Um, any details? And people are working hard to anticipate the needs for Honda and Intel and different people coming, talking about training programs to get people around here ready to fill jobs and um, housing needs, um, reaching out to these corporations before they get, um, as, before they open to um, entice their employees to check out Yellow Springs. And, um, I didn't read the I didn't read the article about the YSDC in the paper. Um, I think they're they're very enthusiastic about the development. I think that that crew is, and um, I think they're enthusiastic about the potential of more development in the, the township. Um, I'm just the messenger. Um, but they, they had a lot of... In the township or in the village? The township. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but they were... Um, I can't remember anything else, but it was a very good meeting. Um, were there any potential locations that were being identified in Miami Township for development? No. Not specifically. Um, that's about it. And CASP has, as of Tuesday night, has, or maybe it was at their Monday night at the, re, what do you call it, the retreat, um, has, they've dissolved CASP. They're going to keep the 20000 that they get back from Agraria. And a lot of what was going on there, which was, we all agreed, was a very, um, lively and um, engaging group um, will be moved to the Environmental Commission of Yellow Springs. And so I'm going to ask, as I was our representative to the Climate Action Sustainability Project from the township, that I now be our representative to the, the Yellow Springs Environmental Commission. Is that appropriate? Is there a position for a, a township member? Actually, I don't know that, or, or maybe they just want me to attend to keep us in, in the. No, no, I wouldn't be a, a. I wouldn't be a member of the commission. No. No. I would just be a, a, a person who reports back and keeps oh. keeps um, the um, collaboration of ideas alive. So I don't. We don't need to prove that. I can just go home and report back to what they're. I don't think so. No, welcome reports. And I enjoyed the YSDC meetings so much. Is there any conflict with me going and just listening as long, if we have two two townships trustees in the room? We actually have two votes. 
that is, we appointed in January Corey Van Ostel mm -hmm. and myself. So I can um, be an attender, right? Oh, sure. You could be a member of the public. I could be a member of the public. Yeah, you, you really couldn't be an official representative. Oh, no, no. Of the I have not that interested right. in that. Okay. Um, new business. Um, this is something that was brought up last week as um, about our email and how we don't have um, all of our emails contained on our domain and that includes some of the trustees, all of the trustees and the, the zoning inspector. And um, I got another call from someone who today who questioned why, you know, the zoning inspector has a private email for testimony and things. So it's about time to, to solve this problem and I don't know, I know you've wanted for a long time. So I would entertain a mo motion to transfer the township email from Servlet to Microsoft 365. The purpose is to have all township business conducted on our server and, and being able to have a process for review of personal emails. Uh, not personal emails, but individual emails. Uh, I'll, I'll make the motion. I'll second. And I need discussion. Me too. Go for it. Uh, so will we have uh, individual emails, not just trustees, but members of Zoning Commission, members of BZA, or is it just trustees and staff? Uh, I mean, right now, uh, the fire department has a separate uh, URL. So the there is a fee for each uh, email user. Um, when I've talked to Marilyn and Chris about this, um, I didn't think about you know BZA people and, and other groups. So that would be your guys's call as to whether or not to do that. Um, for, for you guys, my recommendation would be that we actually purchase an Office 365 license for you so that you get the full Office suite, but you can also purchase emails only, which gives them Outlook and essentially a web email client as, as well. Um, so then you would, at least under, you know, so each, each individual gets their own email address, but um, you can set the township uh, email address so that it continues to forward so that all three of you see if somebody sends an email to trustees at Miami Township that gets distributed still to all three of you. But you still also, you also would have the ability to send an email from Chris Mutcher or Marilyn, or you, that are that is specifically was sent from you, or you guys would need to decide: Do you want all your correspondence to come from trustees, you know, at Miami Township? Uh, so there's some logistical things based on how, based on tradition and, and whatnot of how you guys have typically responded to email. Does that answer your question? Uh. -huh. It's an answer. Mm -hmm. Still, do, do we want, in, in talking about this, have we thought about uh, the situation that a BCA member might be in where they have had uh, emails that have to do with their business, their function as a BCA member, on their personal email, and so someone asks for a public record request, and then you get into this, well, who decides what part of, your, of my email you get to see? Um, am I making sense? Yeah, I have, I have no idea how other local governments do that. If every commission they have, like does the environmental commission of the village, do the zoning commissions, and do they all have a, 
YSO email? I, I think when the time came, we would, we would get as much information about that, uh, standard practices, okay. and, and certainly our, our legal opinion, had a legal opinion as to what the best, best practice would be for that. Um, you, you would not have to make that decision this evening right. because it's yeah. an easy, yeah. it's a very easy thing to activate. Okay. Um, pretty much instantaneous activation. But your other question of, we would have a joint email and also individual email accounts. Mm -hmm. Are we agreed on that? Because mm -hmm. the so. minutia for all of us sharing is overwhelming sometimes, um, or could be. So, okay. My question is, how do we get it done? Who do we get to do it? So I would just say, you know, for, for your purposes, I, ha I have to be in the same, you know, in the same admin stuff. So it's really not a big deal for me to go ahead and do it. Um, it's, um, you know, I, I would not see it being a big administrative thing in the sense that once I had it set up, which would take me maybe an hour or so, um, the biggest thing to figure out is, is it possible to migrate all the existing emails from Servlet to Office 365? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you know, we, we did that for the fire department, but we owned our own Exchange server so it was Exchange going to directly to Exchange. Exchange is the name of the Microsoft email server. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know how practical that would be that it, to be able to do, move that from Servlet. But you know, my personal thing would be to move that from Servlet so that you don't have to maintain that email archive mm -hmm. until you know three years out. Yeah. Um, so if it could be moved, that'd be great. If it can't be, then you're you're going to have to pay Servlet for three years. Yeah. So that'd be something I would, uh, I would, I would actually ask Jeremy Ray and the fire department to help with that because that's, that's kind of his expertise. Really, he might be available. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. And so, I would entertain a motion to. No, we we oh, we just haven't voted. We haven't voted. Okay. I lost track. And when we vote for this, we're just giving. Um, Denny, in his graciousness, the the, um, the permission to go ahead and do it. So may we go, please. <laughs> I just make sure and second to transfer township email from Servlet to a Microsoft Office 365 account. Is that sufficient? Yes. That's great. Um, Mr. Mutter. Yes. Mr. Hoff. Yes. Ms. Martin. Yes. Motion has been approved. All right. I have a note here that says 250. We are going to talk about who. That 250 came from correspondence. Will we? Um, I would entertain a motion to contribute to the Greater Part Greater Dayton Partnership for for the Environment Fall Awards Celebration. As a sponsor for two hundred fifty dollars. So moved. I'll second it. Chris, would you say a few words of why why you support this? They're, they're just. Uh, there's a lot of local involvement with it. I, I, I'd have to get the the, the, the letter mm -hmm. from them, and I'd be happy to do that. But it's yeah. it's been on the table. I don't know if anybody's read that. Uh, it's a group I've been active in. Leadership Institute, where I've been a mentor, and uh, it's a fund under the Dayton Foundation. Okay. It's Hearing a project in the Dayton Foundation. Okay. Hearing no more discussion. Any vote? Has been moved and seconded to um, sponsor. 
help sponsor the Greater Dayton Partnership, Partnership for Environmental Fall Awards celebration in the amount of $250. Second. Uh, Mr. Mutcher. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Motion approved. Um, old Business Channel 5 update. I really like the new guy whose name is Ben. Isn't it Ben? Gunther? Pardon? Might not be Ben Gunther, but I think it's Ben. It's Gunther. Ben something. I'm okay, it's Gunther. Gunther. Oh, okay. Um, so he agreed that we have a very, you know, funny process of swapping the camera and things. We, we've talked about a lot of things, but it's not worth talking about, but we got that straightened out. It's going to get even better. And do you want me to take it downtown tonight? Yes. Okay. To the, and, um, to the police dispatcher. And we have some plans in the works where we could get the turnaround faster and things, but that's all that needs to be. Um, he's a good guy, and that's all that needs to be said. Any update on solar, Don? Uh, that is specifically Kingwood? No. No. I um, ran into a woman who Kingwood just hired. Um, and had a long, a, a community liaison. And had a long talk, talk with her, and I, I'll be. Was it a long talk? Really? It was a long talk. It? it was a very long and interesting talk, and um, I will be meeting with her again. So, she'd like to show me some things. That's all. Um, at this time, if we have nothing else. Oh wait a minute. Oh, oh. Yeah, I, if I missed it, have you submitted the resolution to the county commissioners for the? moratorium, uh, the exclusion zone yes. that we did. You, you submitted they it They submitted it then, and they requested a map, and I got a map to them okay. that, they, that, that they were happy with. And it's 30 days that the, that before they will formally vote on it. Yeah, but, well, it, it's probably going to be about 40. If from when we started, they have to mm -hmm. do a certain amount of advertising. I mean, I submitted it, and they said, thank you very much. That's what I know. I haven't seen it advertised, but it's supposed to be advertised in the county. And I've been at two county commission meetings where other townships uh, were from their, <clears throat> it was the formal vote of the county commission banning uh, solar in the township, or banning utility scale solar. Uh, and no public showed up. Call me shocked. Well, you may be shocked this time. I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, at this time, the trustees need to move into executive session to discuss and um, personnel matter. Is that the words? No. No. Where's your Where's your document with the reasons for going to executive session? You, you, you have to state those. Person, to, personnel matters is not. No, not good enough. Okay, do you know what it is? Not right offhand, but it is something to the effect that it's for hiring, firing, discipline, uh, legal matters. Sounds like a personnel matter to me. But you cannot just say personnel. It has to be a specific reason. You get your little picky stuff. Well, is that hiring or firing or discipline? A review of um, performance? It's a review. I wish you had had that piece of paper that Jen had given us. So, can we, can so we just, it be legal? Just say from, may I share from previous minutes? Yes, please. Um, consider the appointment, employment, appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee. That's what we want. And I call that a personnel matter. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Cynthia. Cynthia. Um, we don't expect to be taking a vote or making any decisions when we come out. So um, there's you're welcome to stay, but that you will gain no information by staying except for the time that we adjourn. Mm -hmm. Will that be on the video later, the time that you were adjourned, just in case? I can let you know. I'm not going to report on that. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I can let you know. I doubt we'll let that run for 20 minutes. <laughs>
No. Yeah. So, um, it will be in the can minutes. I entertain a motion to? So moved. To go into executive okay, session. Executive for reasons. For the reasons already. So the reasons given. 605 p.m. 605 p.m. Is there a second? Second. Is there a vote? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, so approved.